So I have two, um, I have two browser windows here. One is um, this Chrome browser, and this might get a little confusing, but this is the Chrome browser where uh, I'm logged in as a teacher. And then as I was saying earlier on, uh, a lot of our customers use us with within an LMS. So here I'm showing, I'm going to do the demo as the student in a canvas, but obviously um, could have, uh, you know, it worked the same sort of flow works with all the, all the LMSs. So I'm here, I'm logged in as a student uh, in a canvas and I have a course called Demo 2022, which I was going to show to you. And uh, there are some pre-built assignments. So, and let me just go ahead as a teacher and that's the same course here. So here are the assignments as a teacher. So what I was, um, so if you're a new customer, you will see a interface like this, where when you look at the part in the part setting, you will see some options like um, VS, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, Jupyter Lab. Uh, if you are an existing uh, Vocarium customer, then you will actually see a different option set. So please go ahead and ask us. And the reason why we are doing this one, because VS Code, Jupyter Lab, all this is built on new platforms. So we do not want to disrupt your flow. So we just have to toggle it. We have to show you how to toggle a control at the at the course level so you can get our new platforms. So anyway, so right now, if you if you are existing customer of Vocarium, you know how you create uh, something like um, you know, uh, Vocarium assignment, then you create a part, then you specify what's the lab type, and there are some interfaces. But um, so let, let's just go ahead back as a student. And uh, so one of the things, while I'm going to talk about Jupyter Lab and, uh, and VS Code, but one of the, as I was saying earlier on, a couple of years ago, we were seeing most of the trend was uh, we were being asked for how to, uh, how to deliver high stakes exams. What we are noticing more and more recently, that a lot of requests has been, how can I deliver labs and formative assessment in the middle of the instructional content? So for example, in case of Canvas, uh, not just assignment, we are being asked to deliver as a part of the pages, you know, when pages might be used for delivering instructional content. So for example, here are the pages, uh, maybe you're teaching Postgres, and then you want to integrate in the middle of it, a PG admin. So this is the PG admin lab in Vocarium. Uh, and, I'm, as, and obviously we can go through it in uh, more detail, but also you might want to go ahead and you know, deliver some more instruction and do a quick knowledge check. So this is, for example, uh, obviously completely irrelevant uh, uh, multiple choice test, which I've integrated where you can say who won the NBA final here and you say New York next, which is of course not true uh, since I'm you know, being from the Bay Area. So here you can submit it and then you can get a quick assessment saying, okay, you know, you got zero out of two or whatever, right? So this is, so you can deliver instruction, maybe in a video, maybe some text, some labs, and then some knowledge check. So this is kind of a new integration that we are beginning to see uh, more and more of. Um, so, so, but that was uh, integration. So here hopefully is saying now two out of two, right? So this is uh, integration pages. Now let's go into something which is, uh, we might be familiar with it, which is integration as assignment. So uh, there's a, for example, uh, so let me go back as a teacher and show how this uh, VS Code assignment is set up. So I'm going to my Chrome browser. So this VS Code assignment, I went ahead and created a part and uh, there are some rubrics, elements called code quality and implementation. And uh, I you know, specify that it needs to be lab type uh, VS code, and then let's go to how to configure workspace for those who are familiar. This is how you configure the environment for the um, for the learner, and uh, we'll deliver now VS code. Um, so, and if you let's just go ahead and open this directory called slash voc. So see, VOC is a starter code. So here you, you, you'll notice that there's a, there's a file called Fibonacci.py. So this is uh, in the starter code. So this is what the learner would see when they start um, when they start their work. Now the other directories for things like reading scripts and all that, and I'll come back to it later, 
So let's go ahead and uh, switch to my Canvas view and see what it looks like to the learner. So this is once again integrated through LTI. And uh, so there is some you know, document that you can optionally deliver. And this is the, uh, this is the, this is the code. Now, if you notice, there are some breakpoints uh, and all that already said because I was just playing with it earlier on. But uh, you get the, and then uh, one of the nice things about, uh, as I was saying earlier on, uh, is being BS code that you can get a rich set, set of tools. So for example, in this particular case, uh, as you can see, it's, it is embedded inside, um, in, I framed inside Canvas. So as a part of the configuration, you can deliver it in a new tab or if the learner wants more real estate, then they can go ahead and click, you know, full screen, right? So you can go ahead and say, run it. And this particular case is actually asked for how many terms. So let's just go ahead and uh, say four. And if you notice there's a breakpoint here and there's some variables. So this is using one of the, one of the Python you know, debugging environment from the marketplace, right? So this is, um, so the, the uh, as you can see, the student has access to a standard in industry standard environment, and they can uh, then they can go ahead and submit their work just like um, you know what you're familiar with in Vocarium. So hopefully, uh, this sort of gives you a sense of what the what the environment looks like for the uh, for the learner. And then now let me just go ahead and uh, start a Jupyter Lab here. So Jupyter Lab, as you can see, now has a similar, um, you know, it's a start, it's the starter code, and then the user can once again run it. And this one deliberately does not run because it says the, you know, the the package is not available. Now let's go ahead and maybe at this point, uh, and I'm going to shrink the window, and you'll see why I'm doing this. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead as a teacher. And uh, and maybe some a student asks you why is the why is not running? You can actually this is another page that we are developing called uh, students page, where you can see um, the student work area. So now you're logged in as the now you're seeing exactly what the student is seeing. So if you notice here. Uh, it says module not found. So let me go ahead and shrink the window here. So this is the uh, real-time collaboration capability that we are pretty excited about it for, for Jupyter Notebook, right? So I can go ahead as the teacher and I can maybe uh, insert a cell here and say, okay, what you need to do is So as you can see, the student can see what's uh, what the teacher is doing, and now it's installing the. Installing the package uh, now. This package is being installed. How do I get rid of it? So this this package is being installed uh, uh, locally in the student work area, and for the student to get access to it, they have to go ahead and restart the kernel. And now, if they if everything went right, then they should be able to. As you can see, the you know both sides can see. Uh, as you can see now, it's actually the cell is running right. So this is sort of the this is showing the real time collaboration capability when the teacher can come in and sort of uh, work with the student, right? And I'll show you a different one where the where the team how the team members can use utilize the same capability. So, but one thing which you notice that uh, the package was not available. So of course the student uh, installed it locally. But what if you wanted to install it globally? So from next time, it's now available for all the students. And so that's another kind of a big upgrade over our uh, current experience. So now I can go in as the teacher and let me go ahead and find a terminal here. And I can now install it. Uh, in the teacher view, this package here. Oops. 
So once this is done, as we are waiting, let's go ahead and Oh, sorry, I just got out of that. I, what I need to do now is I need to, there's, a, there's an option available called save, save image here. So this is now going to take uh, basically whatever you did and build an image, uh, which you can now use for, for your classes. So it says image saved. Now, if I go back to the configuration option, what I should see that there's a version available called custom, whatever it is. Now I can use this. Now we'll, um, Right now, the, the system is generating a name for you, but someday we will uh, we'll give you the ability to specify what you want to call it. Now, if I go ahead and save the part, so from this point onwards, when the learner uh, launches Jupyter Notebook, they will actually get the package which is installed now. So this was one of the one of the big requests that we used to get is just a more convenient way to for you to customize, especially when it goes to package. So. Let's go ahead and uh, and show you the next one here. Let me just go back as a student. And uh, just in the interest of time, I'll... Now that one, if you notice, there was no auto grading. So I'm going to launch another VS code, but this one is now configured with, um, with some auto grading um, solution. So this one, I think the, the, the student was supposed to create a fact, um, factorial.py, a function which um, takes an in input uh, arguments and delivers uh, factorial. And we'll just let's go ahead and submit it. Now it's being sent to our grading servers and the grading servers are uh, meant to be able to scale. Um, so we can launch, uh, we can launch, uh, you know, fairly large jobs and, so here, if you notice that it's saying that um, that you got test one, you got zero, and you got test two, um, both zero. And in test one fail. If you notice that it's saying, actually there's a syntax error here in my code. So let me go ahead and fix the syntax error. And then I can submit it again. Hopefully I'll do better this time. So this is kind of our auto grading solution for uh, uh, for VS Code, which is very very similar to uh, the auto grading solution that you have um, seen on our platform so far. But as you can see, the test one and test uh, two, they, they got both five. So let's just go back and see. Now I'm going to flip it to the teacher view and see actually how it was configured. Not completely sure how to get rid of this. Is it hard somewhere now? Uh, so this was the VS Code demo. I will go back as the in the same space like when you configure it. And uh, in the VOC, now there's a script directory. So what you'll notice is that we have written a grade.sh file. Now this is the file which gets executed when, when the work is submitted. So, um, and uh, it is it can have access to directory called VOC private, where you can put in things like uh, golden output, so it's not visible to the learner. And uh, so you can run it, and then you basically after running uh, the script, the the system expects to find a CSV file um, called dollar vocarium grade file, which has the rubric comma score. So if you remember, there were two uh, scores called test one and test two, and that's how you can write the grading script. Uh, so do some auto grading here. And one thing, uh, if you know, if you remember earlier on, I was mentioning that in Vocadium, you can um, uh, you can do a lot of different styles of grading, like peer review, manual, uh, and you can mix and match. So you can have three rubrics which are auto graded, two which are peer graded, and and two more manual graded. So that was hopefully gives you a sense. So obviously there are a lot of details here, but hopefully hopefully gives you a sense of how auto grading works in uh, in Vocadium. Uh, it's um, in our kind of new architecture. It's basically the same as if you're familiar with it, it's basically script, all that has changed is that now it is completely fully delivered on a Docker. So uh, we have we have different files, uh, directory names called VOC private, for example. So let's go back and look at our uh, last assignment, which I wanted to show you. This is a Jupyter lab now with auto grading, but not only is auto grading is actually del uh, also, it is configured as a team project. So, 
So I'm launching. Uh, let me just because I want to show you the how the two team team members. So once again, and now this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my Bookerium. Uh, sorry, instruct uh, Canvas on. on as a different student, which is Sanjay plus S2. So there are these two members, uh, um, these two students are form of, uh, have formed a team. Uh, obviously you have skipped the process. There are different ways you can uh, specify that uh, team in Vocarium. So let's go ahead and look at, let's go ahead and, um, look at this assignment here for this other student. So if you notice here um, that, yeah, once again, it's the same if I, if I go ahead and let me just bring to the exercise two here with exercise two. So if I go ahead and enter it so that you can, you know, the other person would see the, um, it being edited. And let's go ahead and and one thing which you have done is for submission, you can deliver it as a, you actually, you see a little V icon and the submit button is now part of the application. So if you have customized our Jupyter lab. So we are going to go ahead and submit it. And uh, so as you can see now the grading is running here. So uh, if, since they are f uh, part of the same team, both of them uh, should see the same should see the same result. So this particular case is set up as an MB grader. I don't think I'll get a time to show you how to set up, but as you can see, the test one, test two, um, you know, uh, it's uh, someone got two out of two for a test. But I can go ahead and. Like at this point, and change it. Like let's say factorial three answers five. So you'll see that if I run the grading again, it will it will be zero here. So hopefully it gives uh, you an idea about. Uh, let me just go ahead and quickly show how the team project is set up now, and uh, so I'll go to my Sanjay plus T when I. I do apologize because I'm logged in as two different students in the same browser window. So I think I will need to log out of it. And just log back into the, and I'm doing a little bit of a shortcut here to get to my, uh, to my teacher uh, credential in the, in my Chrome browser here. So this is, so, uh, okay, so this is now I'm back as a teacher. So Jupyter Lab, this is the Jupyter Lab was uh, set up as a team project. And uh, I was set up saying learner can form the team. So, um, and the team size minimum and maximum. And I, if once again, as an instructor, now I can go ahead and see, okay, here is a, so this is the page I was showing you earlier on. So here you can see someone has already formed a team and it has two students here and then, you know, uh, can sort of work on it. So, and you can also create, uh, this is this is a separate topic, but uh, this is something else that we have been working on how you can now, you can upload a CSV file for teams. You can have, you can assign create random teams and you can manage teams manually as well as the student can form their own team. Uh, 